Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video seven, and today we're talking about phase distortion within the Wavetable engine. So kind of going back on the phase modulation, it's kind of similar in the sense that instead of the amplitude of the modulator changing the phase, this is going to be changing the phase position. So it's a little weird to wrap your head around. The manual had a kind of a perfect analogy for this. It's kind of one of those carnival mirrors where you look at yourself in this mirror and the mirror is distorting your image in a certain way, resulting in you looking in a different way, whether it's like really weird, skinny looking, you're really like tiny and wide and so on and so forth. So it's that kind of concept that's going to be imposing this shape onto the phase of the waveform, resulting in a different kind of sound. It's a lot, I get it, but bear with me. As we watch these different targets and how we change this, we can kind of get a little bit better example of this as well. So before in our modulator, we have this little line going down left, it goes down, it goes right, and then we go up here to the phase distortion, so the third module on the box. And if we look on this little list here, we have a couple different things. So we have six altogether. So we have skew, round, tripulse, oct pulse, or oct plus, octave plus, pseudo pulse width, and then fractalize. So the interesting description of this, so skew, it says works works with most waveforms, peaks are spread to the left and right, leaving a plateau. So Let's select, let's select this uh, skew here and let's see if that's actually true. So we have our sine wave and as we increase this. And there we have it. We can see the top form here. Let's turn this down just a little bit here. We can see this top side here of this waveform and the bottom side are kind of pushed left and right. And if we go all the way to the right, it does leave indeed a plateau right there. And we can see a good description here as well. We don't necessarily need to have the oscilloscope, but it's kind of nice to actually confirm what's happening. you can get some very, very interesting tonalities from phase distortion. So moving on, we have the round. So it says the source is influenced by a semi-square. It could gain valleys and or plateaus. So let's take a look at that one. So it's interesting to note because with a little phase distortion on this kind of shape here, we almost see it turn into a square wave from a sine wave with different phase distortion. Moving on to the next one, we have try slash pulse, and this one takes the middle of the waveform and stretches it to the left. So let's take a look at that. As we can see it here on the top, and let's look at the oscilloscope and actually see it in action. And keep in mind, all these knobs here with a plus here are able to be modulated. So there's a lot of possibilities and modulation shapes that you can do to make it constantly move like that. Something to always keep in mind. That's what's really cool about the synth. There's so many things that can be modulated. So moving on, we have the octave plus, And this one says part of the source wave is miniaturized on the right. Some harmonics are emphasized. So let's see what that does. Looks like those top ones are going to be the emphasized ones. Kind of looks a little bit like a Batman shape. So far, my favorite one has either been the round or the tri-pulse. That one's kind of cool. So now we have pseudo PW, which is going to be pulse width. So it says stretches the whole waveform to the left and leaves a gap on the right. So let's take a look at that. All right, that is bizarre what it does right there. Kind of make these waveforms dance. See that? Math that to your tempo or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. So moving on to our last and final one, Fractalize. Let's click this one here and it says create, creates up to eight copies of the whole waveform from smaller to larger. So let's see what that looks like. Which is interesting because this almost reminds me just of the wave shaping itself, it reminds me a little bit of the sync option for the analog engine, kind of something like that. It almost looks like it's doing something very similar. So if we hop back into our engine two here, let's turn this on and go to analog, turn this guy off real quick. Let's go to our sine waves here and then let's see what happens here. Turn down number one, turn up number two and let's see what happens when we do the same thing. Almost right there, it looks almost like the same kind of waveform. 
go back to the other one and let's see what happens. So remember that shape here? Turn this off, this is that, and then, so pretty much almost the same type of thing happening there, but just different way to go around it. Kind of interesting, but yeah, that's phase distortion in a nutshell. The the mirror kind of concept really seems to make the most sense where you have a certain type of waveform and then once you distort it with a different kind of the, of the uh, I guess you're, you're really distorting the phase. You're not necessarily modulating it per se, but you're distorting it. You're kind of changing it based upon a different shape here, like the skew, round, tripulse, octave plus, pseudopulse width, and fractalize, resulting in different tones and tonalities. But like I said in the videos before, like this technical jargon aside, it really matters at the end of the day what it sounds like and if we like it. And that's kind of really all, I guess. Yeah. So hopefully you learned something. And if you liked the video, Please, please press like. I'll work on that. We'll get there. And we'll see you in the next video.